Yo, what's up guys, welcome back, next match, cross ban list cap, uh, back again at group B, we have both decks that lost their previous matchup a couple of weeks ago, we have Gladiator Beast, a decklist from 2008, basically tier 1, almost tier 0, depending on, you know, what time you look at the, the format, right, featuring Teladad, etc, so it's sitting at 1 point, or 1 point, it's going to take on Exceed Infernities, which also lost its previous matchup, all sitting at one point. So this will be a very important matchup for both. You definitely want to win this matchup if you still need or want or want to have a chance to move on to the top 16 playoff. So Exceed Infernities, uh, somewhat of a small, well, different list compared to the list that has been used in the past from Sehabis, right? But uh, I mean, the, the core process or, you know, the, the, the core combo still stay the same. And uh, GB as well. Uh, tier 1, but again, close to tier 0 back then, featuring Cold Wave, Prisma, Test Tiger, Stratos upon Normal Summon, Premature Burial, etc. And of course, the Psychic Royal Oppressions and Pole Position. Pole Position is also there, just in case. Back then, that was an important, right? A very, a very clutch card. Um, so Infernities goes first, and they open really well. You have Tin Goldfish for Archfiend to immediately trigger Archfiend. The problem is, um, does the deck... Heck, the, does the deck have extenders now so you have launcher for another search um infinity archfiend searching barrier that's the deal right like what could you search hmm, maybe yeah barrier indeed to negate what is it heavy storm or cold wave or something like that so immediately random typhoon on the back rows and hopefully you know use prisma um this is wishful thinking obviously something like compulse or infinity break would have been there right to interrupt this particular play but i think i needed to go all in because of this right i don't want to give infinities more chances to potentially gain advantage uh rank up the pluses etc so the second copy of necromancer is still there maybe i well did i use torrential tribute too soon but are you really committing uh, into one set with the potential fear of torrential tribute being set um, so drawing Darius not not the best I need to get the bestiary in graveyard right or did I already have bestiary in I think so yeah because of Prisma before so drawing Darius that was terrible yeah that, that's why I needed to because you can't tag out with for the same name unless you uh, use test tiger for that um, so this is like a losing battle, like once per turn, like Infernities, Reborning Archfiend, sitting on a Valva chain, slowly grind the age duel. The Cold Wave could come in kind of clutch, right? So if it wasn't for Darius, because again, I can't go for Darius into Darius if it wasn't for Test Tiger, and Prisma itself cannot tag out. So um, like imagine a Gazaros there, a Gazaros pop 2, tag out for Bestiari. Ooh, that would have been fantastic, but it is what it is. So go first. Uh, normal summon. Prisma, like opening with Prisma is the strongest. Send back, uh, send Bessiari from your deck to the graveyard and potentially go from there. Um, Reaper, Cold Wave, but any GB would do, I guess, right? So use Cold Wave, stun the entire back row. And the thing why Cold Wave is so disgusting, it doesn't only block the sets from being activated, it blocks both players from setting cards during my turn, the one that activated it, and during their turn as well. So that's kind of super disgusting. So Gazaras for two, attack over the Archfiend, go for Laquari and uh, Hoplamus. Okay, because now oh, you can't... Can you tag out for Bestiari? I forgot. Probably not. So Hoplimus in defense and I should be going for Secutor. Oh no, Bestiari and then Secutor probably. Or Reaper. Yeah, Reaper. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. Getting rid of the Soul Charge. The Soul Charge could have come in clutch if it wasn't for Cold Wave, right? Uh, so Bestiari tag out for Darius. No, Laquari. Basically just an extra beat stick. I don't think I have any GBs left in the deck. The Necromancer is a sick top deck though. You can Reborn Archfiend. The problem again is what can you do? You can go for a launcher, but hmm. let me think. Let's say if you crash with Archfiend, are there any place left? That's a question. You can go for a launcher, but I don't, hmm. let me think. Yeah, you could actually do that, no? I, I think there is another Necromancer in Graveyard. Or am I missing something? I might be missing something. Um, wasn't there a second Necromancer? Like, I should rewatch that. So anyway, um, Infernity is again going first. This is a mediocre opening. And sure, you could set Vanity's Emptiness, but eh, that kind of feels mediocre. Um, I mean, you probably should maybe because your hand is mediocre. <laughs> because it prevents the Secutor play. Uh, so go for And that's why Secutor is there, right? It's one of those cards that you, like half of the duels, you're opening Secutor, which is horrible. But 
for the times for like this, where you're able to poke your opponent directly with the test target in hand, so you can fetch the Secutor and gain mass advantage from that. That's why you need Secutor in the deck. It's sometimes a card that I want to side deck out, because you always draw into it. So Heraclinus on field, which is okay, but against Infernities it doesn't really feel like the best, because again they can still top deck Necromancer, set their hand, etc. Double DD Crow definitely helps out with the Infernity, you know, potential combos or prevent them from com comboing off, right? Maxian Hand, ugh, it doesn't really do that much if I don't draw any GBs, right? Or, you know, don't want to commit. And uh, this was an easy game one, a, a, a game win. Uh, okay, so game number four. Um, and this uh, going second hand isn't the best, especially if Infernity is able to, you know, pump out everything and start dragging up the pluses. So Necromancer gets another plus. Are you searching barrier? Barrier pass. Hmm. Huh. Okay. Not so sure whether any other plays. Yeah, it depends, right, on the extenders. Um, this is a big deal. So get rid of the, the barrier, right? But I got breaked. Um and that's that, that that that's the problem of the deck. Even though you're not running too many monsters from uh, or for GB for Gladiator Beasts, you kept drawing those monsters, right? And this is a big torrential tribute, but the deck still has a launcher. Like imagine here a typhoon for launcher. Then I would still be in a duel, but not the case. And again, this feels kind of very similar to uh, as we've seen before. Put Necromancer face down because again I don't want to uh, let them reborn another Archfiend that potentially you know rank up, rank up for a rank four and go from there. Um, I draw Mermel, like one of the worst draws you could you you could have next to Secutor is draw, keep drawing those monsters. Another Necromancer top deck and this should be game right. You can reborn those um, Archfiends. Uh, you should probably go for a game as well. You can go for Livier, uh, 1800, 1800, uh, potentially go for Archfiend, maybe go for another rank 4 exceed play, reborning another Archfiend maybe, uh, or re reborning one of your banished monsters. Yeah, this should be more than enough. Um, yeah, I think so, yeah, more than enough. So 2-2, two, two. this is... <laughs> was this expected? I think so. Again, very similar power level between both these decks. I do opt to keep the Cold Wave and set two back row. Uh, so let's see how this one plays out. Trick Archfiend searching the, um, what is it, the um, Infernity Archfiend. And I was like, no, 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 I, I have to Solemn Judgment that one. So now I can blow him out with the Cold Wave, get in for some nice damage. Damage not that important, but the fact that I'm able to tag out, that's important. So I can go for double Bestiari and Gizarus. This is so, so, look at this. This is so disgusting. Because they're on their cold wave, they cannot chain anything. Um, and Gazarus for the last two, I cannot set anything. So the small downside is that my back row are also blocked. So uh, like, I, I guess one of the top backs should have been maybe uh, another tin goldfish. But uh, not the, I mean, even then, right? I mean, okay, yeah, you could still go for a strong uh, rank four to attack over Gazarus, right? So tag out for Secutor to potentially you know, rank up the pluses during my next turn. Uh, Dust Tornado, the end phase, and this is again more than enough. Well, not more than enough probably to attack for a game, but Secutor uh, tagging out or special summoning two from deck. I can go for Heraclinos and this should seal the deal, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So GB has this one over Exceed Inferno. a slow game, but some of the power traps are power spells like Cold Wave, Solemn Judgment definitely clutched the win here for GB. So next one, next matchup, we have a, a big one as well. We have Metal Foes 2016, Billy Briggs, first place YCS winning decklist. It's going to take on Dragon Rulers from Worlds, featuring Light and Dark as Dragon. So feel free to leave your predictions. Okay, guys, that's it. Thanks for watching. Feel free to leave a like. If you enjoyed the video, leave him signing out. Peace.